Hey everyone, this is Artie, the Vintage Stitcher. In today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make this little pillow entirely by hand. No sewing machine required, okay? This is for all my non-sewers out there. You guys have been so patient. I love you all. Um, if you're new to the channel, um, please hit that subscribe button hit that notification. It's really doing a lot for the cha uh, for the channel right now and it's helping me to bring you lots of new content and lots of new stuff like this. Um, I can show you all of this stuff. If you're returning here and you've been waiting for this video, here it is. I love you guys and on here we go. On we go. Hey everyone, this is Artie, the Vintage Stitcher. So today I am going to show you what all you non-sewing machine people have been waiting for. I am going to show you how to hand stitch a basic pillow. I'm going to show you how I would do it. Now there's many other people who do it differently, but I'm going to show you how I would do it. All right. First thing I do, and I'm going to use bright red thread today so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, definitely use matching thread when you're doing your project okay this is just for tutorial purposes so I have my piece <clears throat> I have interfacing on it okay I have my interfacing on it I have my back backing piece this is probably the one and only time I will tell you to put interfacing on your backing piece okay and you're gonna understand why here in a few minutes but I interface my backing piece with the same interface that I use on my stitched piece, all right? Because we're gonna be maneuvering this a little bit more than if we would be machine piecing this, and it just keeps things neater. It keeps your edges from being getting frayed, and it just keeps things from stretching around too much, and it just keeps things neater. So I do like to use interfacing on both pieces, all right? So I have my stitching thread, I use hand quilting thread. I use a heavier stitching thread. I don't just use cotton. Um, I don't just use DMC on this. I use a heavier hand quilting thread because you can pull on it a little bit. It knots better. It just, it behaves better. Okay. So, um, invest in a couple spools of this, even if you're investing in a couple, just basic colors, the white, black, gray, blues, whatever. Um, I have all sorts of colors because I once upon a time loved hand quilting and I still love hand quilting. I just don't have time. So I have lots and lots of colors. Um, you're going to need big scissors. You're going to need snippet scissors. You're going to need some pens. You're going to need an iron. Okay. You can do this by finger pressing. So if you are in a place where you want to finish something and you don't have that available to you, um, that's all right. You can finger press this, but I have my iron available to me. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare that backing. And we're going to do that split backing just like we do on our other pillows. And then we're going to close that backing up on the back and then put something over the back of it, just like we do our regular pillows. So I'm going to cut that backing piece right down the middle, okay, into two pieces. Ta-da. All right. Then I'm going to put right, right sides together. And you can pin at this point if you want. You're going to use a few more pins. <clears throat> so now you're going to mark. Oh, you need your pencil and your little ruler. Okay. I do half inch seams on this. On this one. Um, I like a half inch seam. Same reason as the regular pillow. It just gives you a nicer uh, folded edge. So I'm going to mark my half inch there and there, okay? So this is where you wanna stop. You wanna leave your gap, remember, for turning. So this is what it would look like. All right. So next thing we're going to do is we are going to thread our needle. And of course, my eyesight's going to fail me now because I am doing this on camera. Okay, 
Remember the fancy knot I showed you where you just take your finger, you hold it in place, wrap the thread, boom, don't move, wrap your thread, boom, you got a double knot. Okay, so what I do is I take and I start from here, okay? And all I'm gonna be doing here is a really tight running stitch. And this takes a little bit, this takes a little bit of pressure, okay? And you're just going to stitch this a really tight running stitch, as tight as you can, all right? Now I'm gonna show you a little trick to how I I'm going to take that pin out of there. It's kind of in my way. So you're just doing this running stitch along here. All right. What I do to make it more secure is I kind of do a little anchor stitch there. Anchor. Anchor. Because we're going to be tugging on that. Okay. And then you come back and I do a running stitch back. And just give it another nice little stitch it's just a little extra added security okay okay and it it's not gonna look pretty that's okay it's on the inside you're not going to see this stitch this is a great place to practice all right make sure and when I do my running stitch back I try and do it like in between the stitches that I've already made I just I don't know it's just a weird OCD thing now here I anchor this stitch pretty tight because we're gonna be pulling on that so just to anchor a stitch you just take a couple stitches okay a couple stitches right in the same spot and you're going through all your layers see how that's going through all your layers not pretty I don't do a real pretty running stitch I'm okay with that and then you can knot that fabric off and I just knot it off and snip it okay basically we're gonna do the same thing oh, sorry I don't have bad habit of putting a pin in my mouth I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Thread my needle. Boom, don't. Oh, I moved. Oh, well. It might be close. Ah, I got it. Yay. Always a big accomplishment when you get it, especially after it slips out of your hands. Okay, so now you're going to do the same thing to the other side. You're gonna, you know, keep this nice and neat. You're gonna catch that at the beginning and you're just gonna do this running stitch. All right, anchor that end because we're gonna be manipulating that, okay? You want that nice and neat. And then stitch your way back. This is actually very soothing to do. I hope everybody can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm trying really hard to keep everything in camera view. If you feel like you have, if you missed an area and you need to come back and do it again, but that's what it looks like on the back, okay? Um, if you feel like you missed an area, come back and stitch it again. Not a big deal. Anchor it a couple times. You're making a stitch all the way through. You want that nice and tight there, okay? Because when we flip that pillow around, 
we don't want that letting go on us <clears throat> okay and then knot and do a hefty knot okay all right so i'm gonna set that aside so now when you open this and you press it you're going to be able to press it open just like we did with the machine stitched one okay so you want to press this open if your hand stitching this down just kind of maneuver it with your hand or if you're I'm sorry if your hand pressing it down just kind of maneuver it with your hands all right if you have an iron available bring it over to the iron give it a nice shot of steam get it to lay nice and flat and you have your backing okay so now now on to this piece we're gonna do things a little differently with this piece okay so I have my ruler and my pencil and I'm going to mark my three quarters inch like I always do okay with my pencil three quarters inch making my square getting it nice and neat and straight Get marking your three quarter inch lines, right? Okay. And you want these pretty accurate. Okay. Okay, so now you have your three quarter inch lines. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to mark your quarter inch seam allowance on here, okay? So you can use a different color pencil, you can use the dash line, whatever you want. I tend to do a dash line, okay? But you mark your quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. Like that, okay. And I'm going to show you two different ways. Um, the first way is really easy. Now, the first way what you could do is you could definitely just take your backing and pin it your back in and your piece and your and your um, pin them right sides together and you could do that running stitch all the way around easy peasy you can do that that's not a problem um, sometimes when I have something super super small that's how I do it because it's just it's small and it's easy I'm going to show you a little bit more in depth way of doing it um, and this is all by choice okay so what I'm going to do, and this way you definitely need an iron. So, so you could definitely, like I said, you could take your thread, you could start here, you could anchor it, wherever you want to stop and start because you're going all the way around. You have your opening on your back. You could do that running stitch all the way around. Sorry, my wash machine is going to go off balance, guys. <laughs> We're living real life here. Um, you could definitely just do that running stitch all the way around and you could go around it a couple of times so that it feels secure and then you can trim it flip it move on okay the other way you can do it <clears throat> is you can cut right on those lines okay everybody's gonna panic <gasps> everybody's gonna freak out okay you can cut right on those lines Okay. All right. All right. And then what you're going to do is you're also going to trim your corners just a little bit. Not a whole lot. I don't, I get nervous around my corners. Um, I'd rather a little too much bulk in there than not enough. 
um, and then run and then be running okay so then I have this piece here this is my backing piece all right you're also going to cut that to exact size exact size so get that get that opening where you want it to be and then pin this down and cut your backing the exact size of your piece of fabric okay make sure everything is lined up and then cut cut your corners am I making everybody nervous yet <laughs> All right, so then you have your two pieces, exact size, front and back, okay? So this is what I'm gonna do. This, this part gets a little tricky. This is where ironing is good, but not necessary. Um, you can do it finger pressing. What I'm going to do is I am going to fold back towards the wrong side of my piece on that quarter inch stitch. So on this line, that stitch line, I am going to fold this fabric back and create a crease, okay? And that's kind of why I, I trimmed those corners because those are gonna fold in. Um, I like an iron because I like it nice and stiff. And I like it to stay where it's at. And this is what you're getting, okay? Can you see that? Okay. Then you're going to do that all four sides. And when you have this corner, like when you trim your corner, it, it reduces the bulk there for you, okay? Um, it's, just, it's just nicer. It's just nicer. So I'm going to go, and you can leave a larger seam allowance if you want. That's totally okay. You could do a half inch seam allowance. You could go back and trim if you want. Um, you can leave an inch seam allowance and go back and trim if you want. Whatever you're comfortable with, okay? I just do, I'm, like I said, I'm a quilter. I live in a quarter inch world. That's, so you're trimming that back. And you're holding that back. See how that, there's hardly any bulk there now. And you're folding that back okay and you're pressing this is how it's looking from the front it's looking good from the front and then you do this last one Okay, so now you have this piece, okay? So on your backing piece, what you're going to do is you're going to mark that quarter inch seam allowance. All right, you want to, let me get my ruler here where I can draw lines. Let's do it on this side. Sometimes I forget I'm right-handed. So you draw those quarter inch seam seams, okay? Draw those quarter inch lines because you're going to do the same thing on this backing piece okay all right so now you're going to do the same thing here <clears throat> you're going to take that and this is where that's that um interfacing really helps it gives you a nice it gives you a little bit of body to work with this fabric like this okay and then stitch so like I said you can do quarter inch here you could do half inch here you could do one inch here whatever you feel comfortable with um, I come in I kind of snip this that's a lot of bulk right there okay you can snip those off not right to the seam allowance but below your fold it's gonna really help 
it just you want to get rid of anything that's going to reduce some bulk because you're going to have to sew through it remember you're going to have to hand sew through this so i come back over to my iron A lot of my hand stitching techniques have come from when I was younger um, and I wanted Barbie clothes. <laughs> they didn't have a sewing machine. My mom didn't have a sewing machine when we were growing up. I mean, it's just, it wasn't, it wasn't part of our world. But of course I wanted Barbie clothes and I was taking things apart and getting scraps from my grandma and whatnot and needle and thread and stuff. So I had all these scraps, but um, I had to figure out how to make Barbie clothes. So <laughs> that's where a lot of my, my self-taught came in. Yes, I was a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Um, okay, so. Okay, so now that is all pressed. See how that looks? Okay. So this is the fun part. <laughs> this is where you have to have pins. Pins or clips, whatever you enjoy working with, okay? I know a lot of people have the clips, a lot of people, I'm just too cheap to buy clips. Um, so you take your right sides together, they should be exactly the same size. Right sides together, make sure your directions are going the way you want them to go, and you put them right sides together, okay? Edge to edge, edge to edge, edge to edge and you pin, and you pin. Always remember, now I'm a, a right to left sewer, so I aim my points to the left, because if you aim them to the right, you're gonna poke yourself. So if you're a left to right sewer, if you sew, stitch this way, point your points the opposite way. So always point your points in the direction that you're going to sew. Um, it's going to save you a lot of blood. A um, lot of gore. <laughs> okay, so I'm stitching, I'm pinning, and I'm lining those edges up. I'm lining those edges up. <clears throat> and yes, we cut that. We're going to fix that at those little seams there. We're going to take some anchor stitches. Don't worry about those, okay? Don't panic about those. Oh, that pin's like way shot. I have pins that are so old. They just need to go in the garbage. <clears throat> All right. Line those edges up. If you got a little puff in the back, that's okay because remember, we're going to put stuffing in there. So not a big deal. Um, Okay, so now you have this, ouch, I poked myself anyway. So now you have this nice, neat little sandwich. This neat little Sammy, okay? <coughs> we are going to take our needle and thread. And... I love doing this with Ada. Um, well, I like doing this with linen too because it gives you the it gives you the holes. You have some place to kind of like stitch to, it, and it feels good. It, it's very satisfying. Okay, notch thread. Like I said, I am using I'm using contrasting thread so you can see what I'm doing. You would use matching thread. Okay, I'm gonna set my iron over here. Get my scissors out of the way. My scraps. All right, I never ever start at a corner. I don't know why. You can start at a corner if that makes you happy, whatever. I don't, I always kind of just start in the middle someplace. I like to get, um, I like to get a rhythm going before I have to run into any like challenges. So <laughs> I wouldn't even start here because that's like a challenge and then the corner. So I like to get my rhythm going. So what you wanna do is you take 
when you grab your th you grab your fabric you're grabbing just on that folded line that that's that that line that we just steamed okay and then you go right through the two the two pieces make sure you don't catch your fingers on the needles and I've got my stitch there okay I take a couple stitches there to anchor it I get that baby going first okay see can you see how I got that stitched this doesn't have to be a pretty stitch it's on the inside so you just kind of do you know if you're practicing the ladder stitch this is the perfect place to practice your ladder stitch it gets you in the rhythm but basically all you're doing is you're just coming in and you're swooping up little edges just the tiniest bit not I mean just equal amounts so if you're taking a deep stitch on this take a deep stitch you want to take a substantial amount of fabric in this because you don't want to leave holes but or you don't want it to like threadbare through but you also don't want to take a huge gap because you want your seam allowance to kind of stay nice and tight you you want to take equal amounts so whatever you kind of get in the rhythm of that's what you want to take and you want your stitches to be fairly even in length so now I'm coming to this little spot here where we have that seam and we cut that knot remember so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple extra stitches in that area I'm going to just tighten them up just a bit so that I make sure I catch all of that just tightening up my stitches are not neat and they're not fancy um, You can kind of see what I'm doing okay so this is what it's gonna start looking like can you see that all right I'm gonna get through to the corner I'm gonna show you how to do the corner and then I'm gonna pause the video because you don't need to watch me stitch all the way around this once you got this you can sit and stitch and then we can get back to um, back to how we finish it okay Let's get to this corner. And you get into a rhythm, and then all of a sudden you're going to notice, oh, my stitches are all going the same direction. They're all nice and even. I've got the same amount of fabric. Hey, this isn't so bad. And it's actually kind of therapeutic. There are a lot of times when I will prep a whole bunch of this stuff to stitch in the car or the camper um, especially if I don't have a big project that I can work on in the camper and I just want to get things done you want to get things finished up but you just don't have time to sit at the machine and do it um, you're going on a trip or something like that then you can feel like you actually accomplished something and I take my pill Pit, my pills, my pins out as I go because then I feel like, whoo, I got something done. And it kind of tells me where I, what I've got left to stitch. Okay, so now I'm coming up to a corner. So you want those corners to be nice and neat, okay? And we have reduced a lot of that bulk. But all you're going to do is you're just going to take some tighter stitches around those corners. It's not anything fancy. You're just making sure like none of that frayed fabric is going to peek through peek through your corners okay and just take some tighter stitches and work your way around it's going to naturally work around eventually you're going to get around the corner um and then you continue on nice and neat Like I said, it's very therapeutic. Turn on a movie, 
Um, if you're if you got a bunch of little pillows to finish, get them all prepped like this. Turn on some good Netflix and stitch away. I a lot of times I have this stuff like piled up in a basket, um, and that's what I do. I just kind of stitch it. And I stitch away. I'll do my bindings on my quilts. I'll, you know, I'll close up all my little pillows, or I'll, I'll stitch all the fun little stuff on the back. You know, all my little felt pieces. I do all sorts of stuff in front of the TV, or I'll knit, or I'll cross stitch. I'm not a big TV watcher. My husband just likes me in the same room in the evening with him. He doesn't care what I'm doing. He's watching car racing, so I am usually doing something completely different. He'll be. Usually he asks me, did you see that? I, I was not even paying attention. Not even close. So, okay, I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to finish stitching around this whole thing, okay? You're going to just continue to do those corners just like that. You're going to stitch around the whole thing. All right, we'll be back in a few. Okay, so we're back. We're coming around this last corner. I figured I'd show you a corner one more time. Okay. And we're stitching, like I said, I just take a little tighter stitches around this corner. Just to kind of keep any frayed edges from popping through, okay? Just kind of double it up a little. We're coming back to our our start here. This can be a little hard on the fingers, so if you um, feel you need to get a thimble, um, definitely. The interfacing does make it a little stiffer, um, especially with this being on Ada. It's already a little stiff. And then you add interfacing to the backing fabric. It does um, it does make it a little stiffer. So I always stitch a little bit past my stop, my start, and my stop. Okay, um, just a couple stitches. It doesn't have to be a lot. I just feel like it anchors it a little bit better. I don't know. I like I said, some of this stuff is just OCD. Just you know things habits I've created over there sorry I'm shaking and then you just knot this off knot this really well two three times oh and of course of course I made a nice knot it's got a, got a bunny ear okay and snip that oh well bunny ear and a tail life moves on okay so that's what it looks like. Oh, so that's what your stitching looks like. My stitching is not neat by any means. By any means. I remember one time when I was younger, I wrote my sister's sweater and my mom made me hand sew it back together. And then she made me hand sew it back together neater and it wasn't any better. So this is where you kind of want to take care, uh, kind of be gentle when you're turning this, okay? because <clears throat> I just don't feel like the hand stitching is as strong as machine stitching. I don't know. I know it just might be me. And now I can I can see my threads through that. I used I used a contrasting thread to show you what it's going to look like. Okay? I'm going to be covering this up with trim. I'm not worried about it. I wanted you to see what it's going to look like on the other side. So so yeah, you are going to see stitch marks unless unless you have a better stitch than I do. And if you do, please let me know in the comments because I would love to. Um, or if you practice your ladder stitch on there, I bet you the ladder stitch might work better. Um, I'm always open. I mean, you guys have been on all of these tutorials have been great. I've learned a lot of fun things and some new techniques. You guys are like, hey, did you try this? I'm like no but I'm going to um all right so now you have your pillow okay 
I'm going to give it a little shot of steam, get some of memory in that thread. You do know that thread has memory, right? Just like yarn or any other fiber, when you hit heat to it, it has, it has memory. So I'm giving it a little shot of steam. All right. So this is, yeah, see, my stitches are not that neat. But like I said, I'm going to be coming back and I'm going to be putting trim on that. I'm not worried about it. So I don't mind showing it in a contrasting color for you guys. So that's what it's going to show. That's how it's going to look on the outside. Um, but if you're using a matching thread, it's definitely going to look much better. Much, much better. But that's how, how you do it. Okay, so we're going to stuff it. Same as the other little pillows. You do your little pockets, do your little batting in the corners. Put your batting in there. All right. If you've watched my other videos, um, you'll know my little technique. If not, I'll, I'll go through it again. I probably just did it like mindlessly thinking I already, everybody's seen it. If you're new here, what I do with my corners is I don't like that the polyester batting does not stay in, in my corners. It always kind of shrinks back. So I take cotton batting, it's got to have some cotton in it, and I just take a little wad of it and I stuff it in the corners. And it seems to really hold, it gives that polyester batting something to almost grab onto. Does that make sense? And it, it keeps those corners nice and full and stuffed. And then I don't feel like I'm like, then I don't have like empty corners. I, I've been doing it for years. Um, and I thought maybe it was just me, but now that I've been teaching, uh, teaching you guys on video, um, other people have been trying it and it said and telling me it works so it's not all in my head which makes me feel much better <laughs> so then you stuff this and I just stuff with regular polyfill from Walmart Hobby Lobby whatever um, whatever's handy I don't use anything fancy, just the regular old stuff. I like a puffy pillow. Make sure you're getting all your edges. Make sure you're getting all your edges when you're stuffing, okay? Stuff to the edges first. The edges in the corners first when you're stuffing your pillow. I always kind of take my hands and I kind of just push that way. Kind of make that hole, I make a hole there. Get everything stuffed the way I want. And then you could fill that hole from the back, okay? All right, that uh, looks to be about good. Just about right. All right, so I'm going to do the ladder stitch on this in case there's um, new people out there who have not seen it, and I'm going to do it in the contrasting thread again, um, simply so that you guys can see it better. Um, the last pillow I did was for a customer pillow, and I did it with the matching thread, and I kind of felt bad because as, as much as I like to be able to show you guys, I had to do it in matching thread. It was for a customer. I want, but I want you to see how I do it. Now, and of course, I'm going to, you know, I may or may not cover up this back with something. <clears throat> I don't know. We'll see. I probably will. I'll probably dial it up with something. I know I'm going to put, um, I know I'm going to put like trim on it around the edges because it's just calling for something cute. All right. So when I close up a pillow, whether it be on the back, top, bottom, wherever, I use what's called a ladder stitch. Now, um, I never start stitching at the opening on either side, okay? I start stitching a couple stitches 
back from the opening, okay? So I bring my needle and thread up. I'm gonna bring this up and I'm gonna show you. I bring my needle and thread up, if you can see that, a couple stitches back. And then that buries that knot under there for one thing, okay? And then I stitch a ladder stitch. So I'm gonna get this started and you're gonna kinda of see how it, how it goes. Basically all you're doing is you're taking a little gap from one side and a little gap from the other side. And once I get this started, you're gonna see how it, how it looks, especially with the um, thread. So you're taking just a little, just a little stitch on this side, coming directly across and taking a little stitch from this side, okay? Um, and you're using those pressed edges as your guide. Those are there. I mean, those are that's that's what you want to use as your guide. So you're catching the edge of those of that folded steamed edge right there for you. It's all there. There's no fighting it. Okay. You don't even necessarily need a pin to hold this close because I'm going to show you the magic here in a second. I usually do about half half of it, and then I come back and I do the rest. Are you seeing how this is working? This is how it looks. Up close can you see that so I'm just coming straight across taking a little stitch come right across taking a little stitch okay and then here's the magic watch the magic this is why you use a, a thread you give this a little pull. And it closes it right up. Closes that right up. And then you continue on. I do about half, then I close it up, and then I do the other half. Um, because I don't like to pull too hard. I don't want to pull it through the hole. Think that is how I close up. That ladder stitch is the best stitch ever invented. I don't know who invented it. I don't know. I learned it off of Pinterest. Um, yeah. And I mastered it, and it has been the best thing. It, it has been a game changer for my finishing because it just makes my finishing look so much better. My opening and closings look so much better. Um, if you're putting trim on things, you know, your opening and closing don't have to look great, but watch this magic. I just love this. Ta-da! I could do that all day long. <laughs> I just love, and you can't even see that I used red thread. Isn't that great? I just, oh, it's like the best thing ever. And it just closes everything up so neatly. Okay, so I'm just going to finish closing this up. <clears throat> but honestly, guys, this is how I would do a hand-stitched pillow. You get a nice, neat, it's, it's, it's a little firmer than, um, than your average pillow because you have that interfacing on there. Now, if you feel you don't want to do the interfacing, that's totally up to you. Um, you the, the fabrics are going to be softer and easier to stitch through. Um, but you might have more fraying of the fabric. Sorry, I'm all over the place here. You might have more fraying of the fabrics. So just kind of note that, that when you're working with them and you're handling them a lot more than what you would be handling them with, with the machine, your, the fabrics are going to fray a little bit more and they may stretch a little bit more. So totally up to you if you want to use that interfacing on the back. Um, I like it. I don't mind a stiffer pillow. I don't mind the firmness, but that my friends is how you stitch a pillow by hand. Now I have videos out there now showing how to do some trim. Those are going to be coming up. 
um, definitely watch those. So if you wanted to add rickrack or chenille or some trim to these, I've got videos going on for those. Um, you could definitely cover this back piece up with a piece of felt if you wanted. I've got videos showing how to do that. Um, otherwise, you can leave it. I don't think it looks terrible. I think it looks just fine. It's perfect for a dough bowl. It's nice and firm. I absolutely love it. I hope you love this tutorial. Um, if you're loving the tutorials, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Do all the things that's really helping the channel. And it's helping me to bring you more of these videos just like this. So when you're out and about into the world, please be kind, spread love, and find peace.